Greetings, everyone. I am Lotus Prince, and today we are going to play a very, very special game. One that I'm very excited to play because I haven't seen this since college, which is, well, depending where I was in college, maybe five to seven years at this point. I haven't seen this game in a long time, and I'm ultra excited. I modded my PS2 for just the occasion. Oh yes, I'm playing a Japanese game. We are going to play Berserk for the PlayStation 2. Yeah, we're not talking about the Atari game. We're talking about B-E-R-S-E-R-K, based on the hit manga series. And some of you might have seen the anime series. Speaking of which, regarding the storyline, this game takes place relatively late in it. It takes place in, well, put it this way. At the time of this recording, there are currently 35 volumes of Berserk in existence with a couple of chapters that will eventually make their way into a 36th volume. The series is still ongoing. What the game does is it shows you a very relevant cutscene that basically establishes the plot of the series as a whole, and that takes place in volume 12 of the manga. The actual game itself takes place from about volume 22 to 27. But that's okay. This is what I'm here for. For those of you who have not read, watched, or even heard of Berserk, I'm going to give you a uh, relatively brief recap. I know I tend to ramble, but even if I do, it's still going to be way the hell quicker than reading 21 volumes of a manga series. That can kind of eat up some time. Although I do recommend that you do. I have never seen such artwork in manga. Never. It is consistent throughout. It is such painstaking detail. You'll see it for yourself if you, have, if you go, and, go and seek it out. Basically, here's what happens. Our main character is Guts. He is called the Black Swordsman, for he wears all black armor. He's missing his right eye. He's uh, missing his left hand, which he has replaced with a prosthetic hand, and he wields a gigantic black sword. The manga mentions this repeatedly, that it's not so much as a sword as it is a gigantic slab of metal. Put it this way. You know Cloud from Final Fantasy VII, the gigantic buster sword he holds like this? Guts's sword inspired that, and yeah, it's way the hell bigger than Cloud's sword. Even bigger, I know. It's freaking huge. It's so big he uses it as a shield half the time. Guts is probably the reason the series is called Berserk, because when it comes to fighting, he's freaking crazy. I'm talking about cutting up enemies into pieces in one swing. Not even that, I mean cutting like four enemies to pieces in a single swing. He's ridiculous. He's been training pretty much his entire life. He had a really bad childhood, I'm not even going to go into that, but ultimately it resulted in him having to be chased out of the little mercenary group he was in. He wandered around, asim he wandered around aimlessly, just fighting for, uh, for money. He was basically a mercenary, surviving as best he could, and then he ran into people that would change his life forever, known as the Band of the Hawk, led by Griffith. The series mentions this repeatedly as well. Griffith is one of those particularly beautiful kinds of people in that he looks like he should be in a painting rather than real life. And the manga does use these words every once in a while. He's one of those too-good-to-be-true kind of characters. He leads the Band of the Hawk, and they are also a mercenary band. And it consists of a bunch of ragtag people with names, but you're not going to be seeing them almost at all in the game, so I won't go too much into it. But... Basically, the real main people you need to get to know are Griffith and Casca. Griffith, as I said, is the leader of the Band of the Hawk. Casca is the second in command, an extremely talented fighter, second only to Griffith. She's also second in talent as well as second in command. Everyone respects her. And she and Guts, when they first meet, have it out at first, but they eventually develop a romantic relationship, though it does take a while because, trust me, there's a lot more fighting than romance in this series. Don't even get me started. You'll see more than enough of that in the game. Now, they go on campaign after campaign until they actually gain the attention of a king in Midland, and that's a really big deal because the king only has nobles and their knights working for him, but he actually takes on the Band of the Hawk to do campaigns that everyone else is either afraid or unable to do. And any time they ask what seems to be the impossible, Griffith says, why, sure, I'll do it, without any hesitation. And his team pulls it off. It does not take Guts long to rise in the ranks of the Band of the Hawk, and he starts killing people and just drawing up attention even from his teammates, because they've never seen a fighter like him. Although, well, 
Probably should have mentioned this earlier, but Gus didn't initially want to join the Band of the Hawk, but Griffith wanted him to, so they had a brief fight. Griffith actually won the fight, but Guts said, "Can I, like, I'm going to try to leave when I can. And Griffith said, fine, we'll fight again. And if I win, then no, you're staying with us. So, okay. So Guts actually is having a good time with these people. And it's been a long time since he's had a good time at anything ever. So he's at, his life is actually starting to turn around. Like I said, he's develops a romantic relationship with Casca eventually. And you never thought Guts could enter romance of any kind. Trust me. So... He actually starts turning his life around, but ultimately he does want to leave, and he makes this clear to Casca and a couple of other members of the Band of the Hawk. He says, I love you guys, but I'm gonna want to leave. This isn't for me. This is nice, but it's not for me. And when he gets to know Griffith, Griffith eventually shows him this strange pendant around his neck. It's a little red bauble with the features of a human face, but they're in the wrong places. Like the mouth's where the left eye should be, the eyes where the nose should be. It just looks, it's not creepy, it's just strange. Griffith says that this is referred to as a behalet, and he got it at a gypsy one day. And apparently it's something of great power, and it's really good, and he'll be king one day if he has it. You know, all that sort of gypsy talk. But this is a very popular manga series, so you know it's gonna amount to more than just simple tales that are not to be taken seriously. Griffith has a dream that he one day wants to rise in the ranks and become a noble, as difficult as that is. Because when you're not a noble, it's very hard to become one. Griffith wants to become a noble, even a king, and establish his own country. Of course, that sounds kind of like wishful thinking, but Griffith is the guy who could possibly pull this off. He's not only a talented fighter, but he is extremely charismatic. He basically gets anyone to do what he wants. And if he can't do it through charm, then he has no problem resorting to tricks, thievery, and extortion. He blackmailed a minister that was going to screw him over one time by holding his daughter hostage. Griffith is not above such things. He will get what he wants. And incidentally, he also seems to want the king's daughter, Charlotte, who is very much in love with Griffith. But obviously, he's going to have to wait for that to work out because he is technically a commoner, even if he is a very popular one. And the king likes him, but there are some lines you just don't cross. But, as I was saying, the campaigns. They go on one more campaign to raid a castle one day, and they'd heard rumors of a very powerful fighter that had been in there. The other army inside the castle is just dead. It's a slaughterhouse. So Guts goes in alone, and he meets the person he'd heard of only through legend, Nosferatu Zod. This man is said to be unparalleled in terms of fighting prowess, and... He's called Nosferatu because he seems to be immortal. Some people have reputedly said that he'd been killed in combat, only to show up in a battle sometime later. And Zod doesn't exactly look like the youngest guy in the world, but he's not showing real signs of age. He looks like a fighter in his prime, and he's a little too big. Just a little too big for a normal human. Also, he's got fangs coming out of his lower jaw. That's also a tip-off right there. Guts actually manages to injure him, and Zod says that that hasn't happened to him for something like 50 years, so he does something that we haven't seen in the anime series so far. The manga establishes this early, but in the anime, you have no idea this is coming. Zod turns into an all-out demon, a gigantic, almost minotaur-looking beast, beats the crap out of Guts, which doesn't tend to happen. Guts gets injured a lot. But the only fight you've ever seen him decisively lose is with Griffith. And Zod's not even trying anymore. He's knocking over pillars and everything. Griffith comes in to save him, and Zod leaves. But you know you're not seeing the last of him. But after campaign after campaign after campaign, the king finally decides to upgrade Griffith and the entire Band of the Hawk, including Guts and Casca, into nobles. They actually become nobles. So Griffith has attained a major step on the way to his achieving his dream. But Guts really starts deciding at this point that it isn't for him. Being a mercenary with a group wasn't his thing because he prefers to be alone. But nobility? No. <laughs> that's no. You see Guts in a noble's dress and you think that's not right. So Guts decides at that point to leave. He even skips out on their gigantic celebration. As he's leaving, one of the people he had uh, in the band of the Hawk he had told that he was going to leave inform the rest of the crew, and they try to stop Guts, saying, no, please don't go. Griffith remembers their bargain, even though it happened years ago, so they prepared a duel, and it really looks like one of them might kill the other. 
But instead, Guts wins the battle decisively without actually injuring Griffith, but this causes a major, major mental blow. And what makes it even worse is that once Guts wins the fight, he basically says, well, I won. Bye. And he just leaves. He just walks. Guts is that badass. And like I said, Griffith's mind basically snapped. He still maintains his mental faculties, but he's no longer as rational as he was, because one of the things he does a little later is he sneaks up into Princess Charlotte's room and kisses her and starts to have sex with her. It's not rape because she is willing, although quite surprised because Griffith just showed up out of nowhere, but it does not take long for the king to find out, and this is where things get awful. <laughs> I mean awful. I'm telling you, Berserk is not for the light of heart. It really isn't. It's violent, it's disgusting, the sexual content is pretty explicit, and, um, <clears throat> well, it's depressing. Now, I don't mean Elfin Lead or Fatal Frame depressing, but there are parts where you feel bad. This is one of them. Um, the anime shows the king arresting Griffith, how dare you have sex with my daughter, don't you know not to step outside of your place? The manga goes one step further. The king also takes this very personally because he actually wanted to have sex with his own daughter himself. And it was really creepy, and Charlotte was not having that, and enough of that. So what happens is Griffith is taken to a torture chamber, and he's only set free after a year. And by set free, I mean broken out. There was no time limit imposed on his torture. In fact, the one stipulation was that the king said he is to be tortured for at least a year. This probably would have gone on for freaking ever if Guts, with Princess Charlotte's help, I might add, had not broken into the torture chamber to get Griffith out. And believe me, this torture was bad. The king told the torturer, for the first time in his life, do as you please, just don't kill him. Do whatever the hell you want. So when they find Griffith, his tendons and his arms and legs have been cut, his tongue's been cut out, countless lacerations, and they don't even show you his face. Berserk shows you everything, every disgusting detail, and even it did not show you Griffith's face. I want you to think about that. Woof. Oh. Okay. Anyway, they do break Griffith out, but he is a cripple in every sense of the word for life. A, a crawl is difficult for him. Doable, but even that is really pushing it. So they get Griffith out, and this is where things get strange. And this is where the series really starts to be established as the berserk that we know and love. Griffith's behalet, that medallion around his neck, that pendant around his neck, finally starts to do something. Griffith seriously contemplates suicide, and he's actually getting ready to do it by just falling onto a spike on his neck, when all of a sudden the bailet reacts to his emotions. The strange facial features shift to form a proper face. The eyes open, they shed blood tears, and then everything changes forever. Turns out Berserk has demons, and lots of them. Zod is one of a freaking ton, as it turns out. I don't know if there's an actual, I don't know if it's really called hell. Trust me, I think I'm safe to say it. All hell breaks loose immediately, and the eclipse occurs. And we meet what seemed to have inspired the Cenobites from Hellraiser. We meet the God Hand. Yeah, I'm talking about the God Hand again. Didn't think it's that kind of God Hand, but trust me, this one's terrifying. You meet four demons, Slan, Conrad, Ubik, and of course the iconic one, Void. Apparently they used to be humans, but you could barely tell at this point, especially for Ubik and Conrad. Jesus. They come out, and about a bajillion other demons do too, and they absolutely massacre the Band of the Hawk. Like, completely kill every single one, except for Guts, Griffith, and Casca. I particularly felt bad for Corcus, actually. <laughs> a bad dream. This whole thing has been some awful nightmare. The Midland Army, the Band of the Hawks, all just a bad dream. Yeah, that's it, if you really think about it. It was all much too good to be true. Yes, indeed, it's all just a dream. A fantastic dream! When I open my eyes, this will be gone. 
And I'll be back to my plain old self again. <laughs> <laughs> A woman? Here in hell? Now I know I'm dreaming! Oh, damn it, I'm a sucker for a beautiful woman! Damn it! <laughs> he had it horrible. Well, the thing is, the eclipse actually occurred for Griffith. Void enters the place and announces that all the members of the Band of the Hawk are to be a sacrifice for the coming of a new member of the God Hand, if Griffith will accept it. Oh yeah, Griffith is to become the fifth member of the God Hand, possibly the most powerful. He will be known as Femto. All Griffith has to do is willingly allow his team to get utterly and irreparably irrevocably slaughtered. And what does Griffith say? He says yes, and so it happens. Griffith is sealed in a sort of cocoon. Guts and the rest of the members of the Band of the Hawk are doing what they can to fight the demons, but it is not happening. Trust me, it's not happening. Guts is easily doing the best, and, and no, it's not happening at freaking all. What happens is that Guts gets pinned down, and this is where you learn how he receives his injuries that we know about now. He is caught on the hand by demonic teeth, and he stabs at the teeth and breaks the freaking sword. He's not getting through those teeth. But that's okay. Guts finds another thing that he can break through in order to get free. <gasps> And now he's got a stump for a hand. Was it worth it? No, because he's immediately pinned down again. I don't think this was the demon's actual intention, but it was holding him by his face, but one of the claws happens to go into his eye, and that's just where it rested, so that's how Gus lost his eye. And this time, he wasn't getting out of this hold. And Griffith is finally reborn as the demonic entity Femto, and this is where things get really dark. Yeah, the game... The game is pretty cruel in showing you this general depiction, but it could have been worse. Could have showed you the rape. I'm gonna let that one sink in for just a second. Yeah, see, this this is where things ultimately change, especially regarding Guts and Casca, because Guts goes berserk, and Griffith is, I think, staring at Guts while he commits the act. And needless to say, this whole situation is too much for anybody, but Casca's having this and she's being raped by a demon on the eclipse in front of other demons and in front of Guts by Griffith, her idol, now as a demon himself. Oh my god, where do I begin? What happens afterward is probably one of the most depressing parts of the entire series because I said Griffith's mind snapped earlier. <laughs> no. Casca just becomes retarded. I'm not I'm just going to say it bluntly. She becomes mentally retarded. She loses the ability to speak a coherent language. She can only make monosyllabic sounds at any given time and I'm pretty sure she cannot understand human speech either. She just kind of reacts to feelings and gestures. It's really sad. The guts and when he eventually meets team members, his team members have to basically take care of her like she's a child. And at first she fears Guts because she lost basically all memory of everything. And it gets to the point where Guts literally has to tie a rope around her neck as a leash and bring her along. Like, it is sad. She tries running away at night? No. Ties her to a tree. It's awful. One of the ones that, one of the parts in the manga that got me the most, you're not going to see this in the, in the game, is when 
one of Guts' team members, much later in the series, is trying to help Guts himself after he's been injured. He's just lying in bed, and she made some soup for him, and she's just saying, oh, open your mouth and say, ah, and Guts is like, no. Seriously, no. But what's sad, I mean, this is this is kind of done for laughs, because this is way later in the series, so you're more than used to Casca's behavior by now, so this kind of really doesn't even register. You're kind of like, oh, it's Casca being Casca again. But, like, off in the back, you just see Costco going like, ah, like, it's really sad. And that's how Casca is in this game. Now, that's the events of the Eclipse. I've basically caught you up with what you really need to know. I'll get you up on any detail that you may need to know when Guts meets some new characters, because Guts meets some people before they join his party, and you don't see those events in the game. When we get to those points, I'm going to get to them. But... Yeah, I said it once, and I'll say it again. This series and this game, if you know what's really happening in the game, not so much for the faint of heart. This is... It's not a scary game, but it's disturbing. Especially the cutscenes. And as for the fighting, it is violent. Back in my Fatal Frame 4 Let's Play, I said that Fatal Frame 4 is rated 15 and up. And I had mentioned that in Japan, 15 and up is the rated M for Mature equivalents in America that's 17 and up. Remembering that Mature rating is 15 and up, Berserk is 18 and up. Do you know what happens with games that are rated above 17 and up in America? Or 15 and up in Japan? That's the kind of thing you'd have to get at like specialty stores. That's Mature for Mature. And I don't even think the game has sexual depiction. You might, might see Slan topless at one point. I honestly forgot if her hair covered it or not. It's not about that. I really think it's about the violence because this game's kind of blood all the time. That's how Berserk rolls, man. That's that's how it goes. So, um, if you're ready for that, then I guess we're going to start what is a uh, very violent, very brutal, but very kick-ass game. Now I'm going to show you the opening scenes like I always do, but here's something that I've only ever done twice. Once for Silent Hill 2, the tape scene in the hotel, and once for God Hand, because that is just so damn funny. When I show you this opening cinematic, I'm not going to say a word, because trust me, trust me, this song, despite being in Japanese, and therefore most of us aren't going to understand the lyrics, including myself. This song more than speaks for itself. It complements the visuals very well. And this song was made by Suzumo Hirasawa, the guy who wrote the opening theme for Berserk, the animated, uh, well, the anime, as well as many other songs. Paranoia Agent, uh, opening and closing themes, or at least opening theme for sure. Paprika tons of other music he's been doing for decades. The man is a musical genius, and trust me, this song is no exception. Enter Sign. Lotus Bridge. Let's play. In English? Well, uh, all right. <laughs> now loading. I promise this is a Japanese game. There we go. Told you. Mm-hmm. Like I said. Mm-hmm. I haven't heard of that one. Now there are logos I'm used to. And now we begin.
Oh, hell yes. This is what we're getting into. Everything you saw in that opening movie, you will see in the game, whether it be cutscenes or actual gameplay. That is a blast. Now, that... Well, I can't exactly say that it spoils what's going to be in the game, because if you're going to play this game, it's generally assumed that you would have read the manga. So, instead, you would have been like, oh, you mean that part's in this game? Oh, cool, now I get to see it animated. So, technically, there's no real plot spoilers here. But, you know what we're getting into, so, uh, I hope you're ready. <laughs> 